It's so nice to see you again, Miss Davis, after all this time. I don't quite remember when we met last. I think it was after Watch on the Rhine. Well, um, I am delighted to see you, and I feel we should immediately go into a scene from Watch on the Rhine. May I introduce my colleague, Peter Duval-Smith? How do you do? How do you do? I saw it again the other day on television in Kenya, of all places. You did? In and Kenya? absolutely <laughs> astonishing, I thought, how extraordinarily good it was technically. Yeah. The, the editing and the camera work and the, and the direction yes, yeah. were better, really, than, than, they, than they are in films today. A film like Watch on the Rhine, all about the Hitler terror in Europe, how involved did you feel in it? Because most of your subjects have been very American subjects. Well, of course, that part, you know, uh, for that time of my career, was a very small part. Mm. And it's very interesting to look back and realize that Watch on the Rhine would never have been made if I hadn't consented to play the woman, mm. because I was the woman who would bring in the money. And plus this, of course, I felt at that time it was a very important project, uh, story-wise, to put on a screen. Yes. And if you'll remember, yeah. Mr. Shumlin had the most frightening fight with the Hayes office. Yes. About the fact we had to kill Mr. Lucas. No, kill no, me. Kill, Lucas you. had to kill, kill me. Lucas yes. had to kill you. That's yes. right. Yes. And he yes. said, well, then we just simply don't make this film. He said, what is the point of this yes. if we must do this? You I see, know. that's what... That's what this whole fight in the world is all about. Yeah. And I must say, he won his point and made it like the play. Yes. But yes. he had an enormous argument about it. Yes. Well, about it, well, I remember, you reminded me of something. Last night, when I saw you on the television, uh, you were talking about enemies and all this stuff. I always found that when I was working with you, there was no friction of any kind, whatever. Oh, no, that is not what I mean by that. There's no friction on set. It's not among well, the workers. Yes. Any career, whether it's a career in politics or a career in acting or a career in any type of thing, mm. you perforce must make enemies along the yes. way for your yes. beliefs because if you just say yes to everybody there's nothing going to happen but not on sets never no. can, can Complete I ask misconception. How, how, how free you you've been in the in the making of your films I mean nowadays we hear that uh, the big stars anyway have a great deal of say in the uh, oh in the they're show. the most talented human beings in the world today they can do everything but I it, can't it, it, <laughs> I tell you never I had a director and Mr. Warner was the producer and I was the actress. Yes. Uh, I, it didn't mean that I didn't have the privilege of contributing any ideas I had about my performance. Mm. But oh no, we never ran movies then. I had any influence I wanted, yeah. I mean, that I chose to take upon myself, whether it was for self-preservation in the case of a bad director or in the case of a bad script, I was never a coward yes. about standing up for what I knew might hurt me professionally. Yeah. But, oh no, I would not to this day want all that But power. you were right, of course. You can't imagine such a thing happening with a good director, for example. What good, no. What ace director is going to allow a star to uh, sort of engineer the whole thing? And no cast wants to do it with a great director. No. There's no need, because motion pictures is basically a director's medium. Mm. It's a little sad for some of us who adore your work that a lot of your best performances have been given in fairly trivial films. I mean, films... Uh, where the scripts really didn't sort of measure up to to your talent. Well, I don't, I don't know what, what you're talking. What, what, what uh, you're I talking mean, a about. film like uh, Juarez, for instance, in which you right. well, a that was a that, performance. That was a very sad, sad mistake they made in that film, because when Mr. Ahern and I finished shooting mm -hmm. our story, it was a full-length film mm -hmm. and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the mistake they made was hiring Mr. Muni for Juarez who had a right as a star to have his proportion and added 80 pages to his part after he started. This, you see, had nothing to do with our control. Yeah. So now the studio takes it over. Their mistake was allowing Mr. Muni to add the 80 pages. Mm. They should have said, Mr. Muni, you accepted this role in a script we gave you, because this was a brilliant script of John Huston's. Yes. Absolutely a literary script, until they cast Mr. Muni who then p completely put on a rubber face, and the greatest mm. remark ever made was made by Mr. Warner, who paid Mr. Muni a fortune to play Juarez, and he said uh, one of the great things he ever said in his life, he said, why did we have to hire Mr. Muni? You can't find him. <laughs> <laughs> That's he had literally a rubber face. Yes. yes. Lip well, it was a the mask. Most, mm. He had a complete mask yes. of Juarez. As a matter yeah. of fact, when I first went to Mexico City with all the statues of Juarez along the... Reformer Boulevard, whatever it is. Every time I looked at one, I said, there's Paul. Yeah. I mean, it was such a perfect yes, image, yes, which yeah. is not the point of acting. You indicate a character in history. Mm. You mustn't have a rubber face. This yeah. is a perfect example 
of what a star, if he's allowed to, can do to a film. Yes, so yeah, there was Literally trouble ruined with the, this film. Which I was in. The but same. I don't blame him, I blame the people in charge. Yes. Because they should yes. not have allowed him to do it. Now, for instance, when I had to do the age makeup for Fanny Skeffington, mm. I was quite young, and she had to collapse like this, like all famous beauties do, it finally goes. But the eyes and everything were the same. I didn't put a whole rubber face on mm. for this. I put mm. Mm. areas of wrinkles. But you have to... You have to have enough of a definite personality that some of you is there. I enjoyed being that scene telling you off in Skeffington very much, by you the way. You did that awfully well. No, I liked it because it was... Yes, it's, that's And right. you let it be done, which was a good thing. You know, that some stars right. would have protected themselves in a hundred different ways, but you let it be done and oh, you sure. let yourself be made a fool of. Oh, well, that was one of the most fascinating women I played. Yes. Oh, she was heaven. Because she was everything I hate in women. You know, the poor, poor thing, concentrating only on her beauty. Are you surprised at the tremendous success of Baby, Baby Jane? Jane? Oh, it's a miracle, oh, yes, yes. because yes. it was an odd subject and it was made against every odds in the world. And, yes. and, and it was the most least likely to succeed film. I think when Warners uh, accepted it for release, it was kind of a gesture towards me in a way. And they thought, yes. what can we lose? Yes. And what mm. can we win? And, and what does it matter? And uh, so let them make this silly little movie. So it's been rather a glorious, fantastic victory for Mr. Aldrich's company, yes, yes. really and truly. What I thought was marvellous about the film, which I saw last night, uh, was although the dreadful tensions and hates between the sisters come across very strongly, and that is all that most of the critics have noticed, also their love for each other comes across. No um, love. No, no love. love and hell for those two Absolutely women. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh! A kind of Can you imagine love. Jane That's loving marvelous. this woman? With an aspect Who had of she'd herself. waited on like a servant? For 20 years, love for this woman or that woman for me? No. Fear Blanche's. and terror. Fear and terror. And also Blanche is guilty. Blanche is the, blames this woman for, uh, for, yes. for something that she never did all her life? No love. Her, yes. uh, yeah. They hated each other from children. From but the time that Jane was a baby star, Blanche hated her. Mm. And, and, and I hated her the time when she had, was successful as an older woman. Did you find that you had something um, especially personal to give the character of Baby Jane. Does she say anything that you got it yourself, in spite of? No, 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 no. never. This is not anything to do with acting. Uh, no. I no. would hate to think I'd have to have something personal in some of the people I've played. <laughs> Betty, <laughs> that would listen. be pretty frightening. Listen, do you think that the matter of fact, Jane, I never really understood at all. This was the hardest part I ever did. The only character that I never ever sort of put my finger on and knew what I was doing. Oh, but you see, it. but this is why it was brilliantly written because this woman was basically psychotic until almost craziness mm. and each scene was written in a different mood yeah so yeah. in every scene i had to be different yeah. because of the words and this was the most irritating thing for me to play because i'm almost too logical about a character and yeah. i can't really mm. know what's going on i go mad mm. but that was the whole point with jane the inconsistencies of what made it in baby jane there are those uh, clips of old films of your own that are uh, looked at very critically indeed uh, one imagines, you know, by yourself as well as by the, the character in the film. The you know, I have never seen this film. film yet, you know. Oh, so really? No, no, I will uh, see it at Cannes. Uh, well, and in fact, does that mean a sort of comment on some of your early films? Do you now rather regret them? Heavens no, that's when I learned my business. You made so many films, you made about 70 films. Well, that's how I learned to act. I was very fortunate. All the kids today don't have a chance. No. I used to make 10, 12, and 15 movies a year at Warner Brothers. Goodness. And I, that means that you play that many parts a year, mm. you know. And, and this is where you learn your trade. There's no, no place to learn trade anymore. Mm. You know, you said 10 years there was nothing. Oh, yes, internet. absolutely. Well, I mean, how do you feel about that? Because I think the most hellish well, thing just... about being an actor is when you're out of work. Well, I wasn't out of work. Oh. Uh, there was nothing in the, in the no picture I made made money. But you, oh, oh I, I see I make one mean. every year. I but I became, you see, uh, on the list of uh, non-money makers. I see. So when Aldrich tried to put this together, you see, he had an enormous job getting backing. Mm. Because they said, these are just two non-box office women. We can't make any money with them at all. <laughs> Plus the fact that they'll never make it together in 30 days. These two yeah. will just, you know, be so rowy with each other. Well, we didn't have time to row. Such but a place. Never Very, before, I, you never I, I cannot bear it, never have with an actor. I've always had my rows with the men in yes, the front office yes, and not yes. with the people on the set. And uh, we didn't have time. We're both too professional. And uh, Hollywood, of course, you can imagine, was just waiting for it. 
Yes. And they soon gave up and left us alone after about two weeks, you know. Oh, but God, uh, we yes, just yes. we just never would. Two women would be too smart. Oh, Everybody said we'll give you any amount of money for this film if you'll recast it. Yes, yes. And put uh, put um, oh I guess um, Sandra D and some other young girl in it, you yes, know, which yes. is what they're doing today, you see, that's yes, what's yes. sad. Well, one hadn't seen you for several years, as, as George has just said, and yet uh, when one saw you again, I mean, it, it took, um, it took a, a, only a second to realize who was there, that it was mm. Betty Davis, mm. and the mannerisms that, I hope you don't mind my calling them that, that you, that you were used on the screen. But I didn't the... use them in Jane. Well, I never they used them. No, Your they walk? were not. I, Your my walk, walk my dear, the Jane walk, had nothing in the world to do with the way I walk, or have ever walked in any other part. That walk uh, was I, a totally different walk. I you think I waddle like that? No, sir. <laughs> I am very sorry, and I do not use the same mannerisms in every performance, and I would give anything in this world to have time to show you five characterizations, one after the other. I do not. This has become a legend that my imitators have emblazoned in the brains of everybody. Jane was a thick, plodding, clumsy woman. I'm very quick moving and completely different than this. But you are very recognizably the same person in all well, the Well, naturally I'm the same person. That's the only way to start them if you're really a different person in every film. No, I'm really tired of this. There's not one thing I did in Jane like I have done in other performances. Let me assure you, I, those awful, clocky walk, I walk like a streak. Jane slops. That's true, I remember house. that lope for the first day on the set and watch on the and Rhine. Watch on the, and watch on the, the, and the, but I'm watching the Rhine because I was a very calm, placid, organized woman. I would like to show you about five performances and just get rid of this legend that I do the same thing every time. Yes. Because I am one of the few to brag a bit who does not do the same thing every time. But I work very hard at playing different people, and I do. And if you can find one part of Betty Davis as that horrible Jane Hudson, I'll, I'll make you a big bet. Because <laughs> I was a heavy, thick, yes. Yes. drunken, psychotic, Gone, Dame, with no life left in her, except hate. That's a different matter. Well, it was a terrific star performance, one of about at least a dozen sort of really great star performances that you've given. And I wonder if you there must be word some. That tired of, but do you think of yourself as a star or as an actress? A star. And what after is, thirty years. And what is a star different from an actress? A star and an actress are the same thing. There's no difference. There are two kinds of stars. There are non-acting stars and acting stars. Mm -hmm. A star means people come to see you. This takes about 25 years to earn. Yes. Yeah. Usually the press says we discovered a new star. Yeah. Spencer Tracy was a new star. He had worked 15 years in the theater before you ever saw him on the screen in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. A new star indeed. He had earned it year after year after year by working. But the public makes stars. In other words, there are a few people who can carry movies and they come to see those people. The public makes stars. Yes. Today, everybody is a star. Cary Grant said you stars have to... You find anybody today who isn't a star. Uh, Cary Grant said stars start. have to please the public, supporting players have to please the producers. That's and right. And that's the truth, yes. The public then, finds stars, and it takes years. Mm. But one thinks of a very sad <coughs> example, Miss Davis. I thought a very great actor, now dead, I think, Thomas Mitchell, mm. who was regularly in films for about 30 years. Um, one must have seen him dozens of times. He must have been one in of scores the great, of films. great people. And yet he was never a star. No, right? because he didn't have the star quality. The public decided this. Mm. Yes, some he... people have it, and some people haven't it. And mother and daddy and God have a lot to do with it. Some people uh, affect mm. the public, and some people don't. But it doesn't mean that a star isn't an actor. No, no. As you said before, Mr. There Mitchell is the other just kind. didn't have it, and this is nothing <laughs> to, that you and I can really analyze. But it is the truth. But what is Never it that you've got then, Miss Davis? I haven't got. any idea. I'm not. I don't know.
there is a way of arranging stars in a, in a studio like Warner Brothers, in which yeah, they get a girl last. with blonde hair, and they have a lot of hack writers in bungalows in a row, and they say, I want three scripts for this girl. And by arrangement, they make her a star. But that cannot be done in the case of an acting star. It, well, it doesn't last anyway, because you can't plan a star. Mr. Golden planned that Miss Anna Sten would be a oh, great yeah, star. That's true. Mr. Zanuck planned that Miss Alyssa Landy would be a great star. He told the public she was a great star. He spent millions of dollars on her. Never mm. the public tells the studio. Mm. And you suddenly become a commodity that makes money. The yes. public does that. Well, mm. another aspect of the star thing, you've played a lot of star roles. And in fact, you've impressed on all of our minds. Well, I've been characters. in that category for about 25 years. Well, I mean, characters who, who would never have been considered otherwise in films that would have been forgotten. It, you, you play I don't know what film, I'd like you to name a film that would have been forgotten. You Except sound as if I well, only if you exhibited myself. If you hadn't been in it, I don't think we'd, we'd, we'd remember Dark Victory. So. Oh, I beg your pardon. Mm. I beg your pardon. That's one of the greatest stories ever written about a very brave woman. Yeah, I beg your pardon. Well, um, if you had, had this film had been made with a good performance, a really good performance with a star, yes, it would be pretty hard to not succeed in this story. You'd have to work very hard to make a mess of this story. You got everything for you in this well, story. Well, I, I withdraw then, if you like. But uh, the, 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 well, the, the, the fact that you don't care about women's pictures, possibly, but nothing but people go to them. The press of the world have ignored many of my films just saying they're about women with problems. But nothing but people are interested in women. But So the critics have never heard it or helped it. Hollywood, really. But please Men let me go against put to you though. the point that you've played all these marvelous large star parts, but there's so many of the great parts that one felt you to be ideally suited to, such as Hedda Gabler, for instance, that you've not played. I mean, don't because you Hollywood will this? never make Hedda Gabler. But and I or you can't make them make Hedda well, Gabler. Well, what about television? I just saw Bergman in television in Hedda Gabler. Would you have done that? Like no. Done it? You wouldn't? Not in that, not that script, no. In the yeah. first place, you have enough time to rehearse a Hedda Gabler for television. But I think you're very wise. I thought it was terrible. That's but right. why didn't you act more in the theatre then, when you could have played these parts? I don't like theatre. I loathe theatre. Why? because I loathe the life of theatre. I loathe sitting around all day and waiting to work all night. <laughs> I love films. I have three children I adore. I, would never, I never saw them. Mm. I've done theatre. The only theatre I would like to do before I finish this long, weird life of mine would be I'd love to do a play <laughs> here once. I don't think I will, uh, frankly, uh, probably. And anyway, not now. I don't know, it's, it's not, but I love this the attitude of the English toward the actor is extraordinary here. Yes. I mean, the actor that they really have accepted over a long period of years, which I'm one of the fortunate motion picture people yes. from there, yes. that yes. the English public is loyal to. It's a fantastically thrilling thing to me. Mm. I think you would get a great reaction here mm. with an audience that would make it worth mm. yes. doing this thing night after night after night. We yes. only have theater parties and big rich men bored to death and their wives all dressed up really who support the New York yes, theater. This yes. is truth, this is, everybody will tell you this. The legitimate play that is a, is a hit in New York today is a miracle. The only hits are the musicals. Unless I was starving, I would never go on a New York stage again. Really? We have no theater left in New York now because we have no management left and we have outpriced our audiences. Yes. So the people who love theater cannot afford the theater. Lots of actors say that theatre is the only real acting, though, don't well, they? Well, I don't. Well, I not... think motion pictures are the greatest medium for a true and real performance of them all. You've worked terrifically hard. You've, you've, you've made these 70 or so films, including a, a score of outstanding ones. Uh, and work has been a very large part of your life. But has it been the best part of your life? Oh, it's been the only part of my life, with the exception of the children. Mm -hmm. And the rest Although of I married the theatre at 19. But, uh, I was a dedicated person. And any other kind of marriage of the rest of your life has been a disappointment? No, well, I don't wish to go into mar my marriages, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying I, as a person, and any person who really wants any kind of a serious career, must be that dedicated that they marry that profession. Mm. And this, let us put it this way, this is an odd position for a woman to be in, yes. and a very uncomfortable position for any man who is with her. Mm, yes. But if you have this drive for it, there would be nothing in the world that could stop it. But you've got any regrets? I have none. 
I don't believe in them. They're a waste of time. Thanks. Were I wiser, I would maybe have done some things differently, but very few. Mm -hmm. Anyway, professionally. Did you I ever think this was going way. to happen when we were in Hollywood, that this sort of whole edifice would crumble so quickly the way it has and all this? Well, I saw, actually thought it would sooner. Did you? That's interesting. I wonder why. I mean, Because I, I, thought, so I thought you see the monopoly. And um, I, my, my whole feeling about it was that with the way the foreign picture was treated, you know, they would say, well, the foreign picture is divine and wonderful, but it doesn't make any money. Well, the foreign picture was brought into America and put in a house about, about the size of this room. Yes. Uh, so how, how could it make any money? They never gave any of the wonderful British pictures in those uh, uh, those times, that, like Brief Encounter. They I gave know, them I little theaters. Yes. Yes. They never yeah. hit the big houses, so they could say, well, you see, they're beautiful pictures, but they don't make money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, it, and it was all getting too one-sided. Mm. And, and actually, the splitting up of the town is the healthiest thing that's ever happened. Yes. Ever, ever. And I think the doldrums will disappear. And I think, because I think this past year was the first year you could say we made a few films out there that really were good. Yes. Mockingbird you, certainly was good. You really feel there's going to be a renaissance in Hollywood? That they're well, going I don't think it will ever be like you and I knew at once. No. With 40 pictures being made at every studio a time. Yeah. No. There'll never be the volume back again. No. Ever. But there will be more courage about uh, subject matter and originality. I think the inexpensive film with the actor on percentage will be it. Mm. I think gradually, gradually, the enormous price motion picture will go that takes two and three years. Yes. I think this will, will, will go definitely. And I think you will find more and more very talented men, which we have from our live television mm. way back, coming in as directors who have lots of original and new ideas, making fabulous films. Mm -hmm. Do you think yeah. the films are better now than they were when you started making films? Oh, that's awful. I, I know, it's, it's a... It's terribly hard question. to judge because it's, it's, they're different kind of films. Do you think they're more grown up in a way? Uh, less well, fairy story, you know? Well, but you see, that's what's lacking too. Hollywood provided fairyland for many people, which is an important thing to provide. And now they don't. Uh, and, and it's very sad that many of the pictures, they really could sit in their front doorstep and look out the window and see what we're doing on the screen. Yes. And there was a great, wonderful, the only royalty we had ever was Hollywood mm. for our people who needed something besides their drab lives. Yeah. So, was that a good thing? And they, uh, well, don't you think it's a good thing? Don't you think your king and queen provide a thrill? For your people, yes, who have not much in their lives. Queen be Jean Harlow and one's King Douglas well, Fairbanks. Well, one, one's King was Douglas Fairbanks to many millions of people, and so was Miss Pickford. And they got out of the sink and out of all of this and the drab things they had to do and went into another world. That's what Hollywood really provided. Mm. And that could not last forever because there is progress, but there is a happy medium. But you are very glad to have belonged to there it. There is a happy medium. I was very fortunate to be in that era in my In the opinion. heyday, yes. There's, been, there's no continuity to a motion picture career today. No. You make one a year, two a year if you're tw 25 years old. Yeah. There's no chance to learn at yeah. all. And there's very little chance to make a, a, a person a real star today because they're not seen that often by the public. It yeah. isn't a chance. It's just awful. But which of the great but moguls back of it all. worked with? Do you think? I have only worked to... one place, one of one those 18 mm. years. Who do you think made you a star? Me, myself. No, so Underneath them, I sweat, <laughs> blood, and tears. <laughs> but and my fight, that. and my fight for scripts. Nobody helped my you. My fight for scripts. And Nobody beyond helped. that, then came fabulous public relations people. Probably the greatest public relations offices in the world yes. were in our town. And they presented us to the public, and in the final analysis, the public went every time you appeared. And, and I yeah. think the men running the studios were terrific gamblers. And I think men with very big ideas about the world recognizing somebody. In other areas, we can criticize them. But well, they, we, we've lost them. That's what's missing today. We haven't got those men anymore that will gamble. Well, See, a funny. loss of a Mike Todd is a big mm -hmm. yeah, tragedy. Because yeah, yeah. well, he'll go out funny. on a limb. He mm -hmm. will make stars, a yes, man like yeah. Mike Todd. Mm -hmm like men did it for us, you know. Yeah. And maybe one out of every 15 made it for them. Yeah. Which of the new ones do you think is in the old tradition that does act in the way, in the way that you say? Oh, God, when anybody asks me uh, names, um, yeah, it's difficult. I, 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 I always get a block. Um, I certainly think Kim's, our Kim Stanley mm. is a great talent. Yes. I certainly think um, 
Oh, names, I'm so terrible. That's the wonderful girl. Did, did um, Pig Manny in on television? Um, oh. Mm. Shot in the dark. Julie Harris. Oh, Julie yes. Harris. Very yes. talented girl. Yes, yes. Very talented. Um, the New York Theatre. There is a new English girl in our yes. country who won the Tony Award last year. Maybe you can know her name and I don't remember it. Who is brilliant. Blackwell, Elizabeth. Um, oh, I don't know. Is she? She's brilliant. I saw her do one, uh, do one of the Ben Casey shows of all things. She was absolutely brilliant. Yes. This girl is really brilliant. Yes. And I think we'll have an enormous career. Have you done much live television? No, you never. Know. Isn't it the hardest thing of all? I mean, I've don't all the stars it. refuse to do it? Don't they insist well, on Well, and even though beforehand? it's tape, it doesn't make it any better. It doesn't. No, I thought they filmed to, some of it. Who wants to collapse in front of an audience? The audience sitting there and have to break down and say, we'll start the tape again, make up for your mistakes, so mm. you simply must go through it like a performance. Mm. You haven't ever no. rebelled against the extreme bittiness of film acting, you know, that you do a tiny bit here and a tiny no, bit there. No, you have to train yourself with this and accept it. This can be very irritating. But it's a matter of getting used to it, and I had plenty of years to get used to it, and I just adore it. How do you go about um, creating a part? Pope well, Lord <laughs> Raines, when they said to Mr. Raines, yes. one, what is your method of acting, Mr. Raines? He said, <laughs> I learn my lines and pray to God. This is what I do, because yes. I haven't any idea if it's going to work or not when I start a picture. First, I had mm. no idea what to do with Jane the day I started. It's a feeling you get. Some actors are transference actors into other people and some are not. When have you most nearly played somebody that you think is like yourself? Um, I really haven't ever. Uh, the most nearly was a very small part in the very beginning in a picture called So Big. Oh, and I, no, well, it's way, way back, mm. and uh, about 1932, and it's a very small part. Of, uh, uh, the boys, it's about a woman, as you know, and her sons. I was her son's sweetheart. It was the most like me. Mm. The girl in the great lie was the most like me, mm. otherwise. Mm. You know, um, just sort of blue jeans, sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about things in America now? Do you think they've become more sort of high paced and neurotic? I think the whole rhythm of life is very sad. Do you? Yes, because I think that nobody cares much anymore. And I think it's very infectious, and I think that Hollywood can't take all the blame for some of the ordinary material, because I think that, that life has become sort of ordinary, and I think that all art reflects what's going on in the outside world, and it affects writers, it affects everybody. We have no new plays being written. Theater should be larger than life, and that's what everybody is going through at home, is yeah. all the neuroses, so yes. why go to the theater and wait through it? Yes, you know, you've got, it's a very That's courageous thing today, in films, really. this That's technique really of naturalism, and a person comes out against oh, that. Oh, Christ, if succeeds. you act today, I want to tell you, this is the most unforgivable scene I know, in the world. I it know, should look as if there was no camera there, and you just were sitting around your living room. I'm so mm. bored with it. Yeah. The juggler, the famous juggler act, mm. what does the juggler do? He misses twice, right? Yes. yes. And always gets it the third time. Why does he do this? because then you respect the fact this is difficult, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a performance that, that people proudly say you would never know he or she was acting, mm. well, what's, just don't bother. Yes, yes, yes. yes people yes. should know that one is, it is a profession. Certainly you knew Mr. Barrymore was always acting. Mm. You certainly know Sir Lawrence Olivier is always acting. Mm. He does not come on and give what I call a natural, mumbling, apologetic performance. None of your English actors do. They are trained actors. And in training, it is exciting for people. You see, of course, in America today, this is the original sin. It would be, Shumlin told me, never act with an inferior actor, Betty, because it will make you look too much. Mm. Which was an absolutely brilliant remark. Yeah. Now, it cannot always be arranged like this. No. Because there aren't that many actors floating around. No, there aren't. For proper acting, there aren't. There no, aren't. Who, who you can hear, who, can, who is articulate. Mm. You know, uh, half the New York actors are on the stage, when you're working with them, you can't hear them on stage mm. to get your cues, let alone what the audience is hearing. I have had enormous areas of, of, um, of, of, of criticisms that I acted. Mm. This has gone on for mm. years, you know. Well, and I just had to take it because I believe one should be an actress, mm. and I wouldn't have any fun doing it any other way anyway. But I often work with people who do so little. Yes. That I look as if I were doing more. Yes. 
You see what I mean? Yeah. If there was somebody really acting with me, it would look be far better. But I still can't do it.